Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Welcome to my video series where we tackle the tough personal finance questions for Australians all over the world. Today, I'm going to share with you some tips to boost your borrowing capacity as an Australian expat. Now, if you've tried to refinance or get a pre-approval or do anything with a mortgage back home over the past few years, you've probably experienced just how painful and difficult this can be. What you will have also found if you've tried to do this recently is just how busy the banks have become. What previously took a week can now take anywhere from six to eight weeks depending on the lender. So let's get into some top tips to boost your borrowing capacity if you're an Australian expat living and working offshore. The first tip is to clear any personal debt issues. Now, if you have any late payments, credit cards that you're not using, personal loans that you've not repaid on time, check your credit file. Now you can access this for free. I'll be providing some links in the show notes so you'll be able to see exactly where to go to check your credit report. It's free, it's online, and it's fairly quick. So that'll give you a good insight into any personal debts that you need to clear and what your credit score actually looks like before applying for a loan. The second tip is to reduce your credit card limits. Now as Australian expats, particularly in markets like Singapore, Hong Kong, London, New York, many Australian expats have ridiculously high limits on their credit cards. Now, even if you're paying these off every single month, you're diligent with your credit card spending, you're not overspending, you're not exceeding the limits, they will still count as a liability. And the difference between a $10,000 limit and a $100,000 limit can be quite significant when it comes to your borrowing capacity. So consider how much you actually need and consider reducing those limits if you can afford a lower spending amount. This will have a significant impact on your borrowing capacity. The third tip is to consider how household expenses are shared within your house. Is one partner paying for the rent? Is one paying for the household bills? How are the expenses actually shared? If you're working with a mortgage broker, it's important to ensure that they understand exactly how your household expenses are shared, particularly if you're applying as a couple and you're both working, both generating an income, you may find that this has a boost, it has an uplifting impact on your borrowing capacity just by adjusting the way that your expenses are actually shared. The fourth tip to boost your borrowing capacity is to compare all of the available lenders. Now there are many, many lenders, there are many, many loan products in Australia, and there are many lenders that will lend to you as an Australian expat, particularly if you're an Australian citizen or a permanent resident of Australia. And now, given that most of these lenders will treat your overseas income a little bit differently, they may accept your net income, they may apply Australian tax rates, they may shade your income, they may not, this can change how much you can borrow with certain lenders. You may find that you can borrow 100,000 with one lender and 500,000 or a million dollars with another and nothing has actually changed for you. All that's changed is how that lender treats your foreign income. So be sure to work with a mortgage broker that's experienced with Australian expats because this can have an impact on your borrowing capacity. The fifth tip is to get rid of unnecessary loans. If you have a car loan, a personal loan, any sort of loan that isn't necessary anymore, get rid of it, pay it off before you actually apply for a home loan or apply to refinance your mortgage. This will have a big impact because quite often, even if you might be paying a low rate, if you're in a low interest rate market like Singapore, for example, but the Australian bank, the Australian lender will apply a higher rate based on Australian interest rates. So this again can boost your borrowing capacity just by getting rid of those unnecessary loans. My sixth tip for you to boost your borrowing capacity is for those that are self-employed. If you're running your own business, you might be drawing a salary, you might be generating dividends, you might be getting paid a director's fee. It's important to understand what lenders in Australia will accept and what they won't. 
you may find that paying a regular salary over a fixed period of time is a much better idea, puts you in a much stronger financial position as far as the bank is concerned than simply being paid dividends. Again, speak to a mortgage broker, understand how the bank's going to assess different types of income. Again, this can boost your borrowing capacity. My seventh and arguably most simple tip is to reduce your monthly expenses. Any fixed expenses that you can get rid of or reduce, again, are going to boost your borrowing capacity. If you have gym memberships, club memberships, whatever else it may be, that are in your credit card or in your bank statements every month, if you can live without them, get rid of them. Again, reducing your expenses each month is going to boost your borrowing capacity. You're in a much better position with the bank or with the Australian lender, and you'll be able to borrow a bit more money. Now again, be sure to consult a tax advisor here Speak with a qualified mortgage broker that understands the Australian expat space and you may just find that you can put yourself in the strongest possible position to apply for a loan or to apply to refinance your existing debt. If you have any questions at all, please do feel free to fire them through. Don't forget to subscribe, stay up to date with our latest updates. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time.